record? Yeah, challenge the record. Um, I'd love to see it, but I'd hate to see it because Tori was one of my favorite human beings ever to walk yeah. the planet. Good dude. Ended up enlisting in the Army after college. Yeah. So uh, we can go over a couple brief stats. Just nothing. I... I'm, this is more for myself than anything. I'll keep it short. I yeah. Tend to get a little long-winded. Yeah. Um, are you gonna introduce me coming in or Cooper Moritz? Yeah. That, yeah. That's good. Okay. If it's not, tell me. No. It, that that's good. More it, Moritz or Moretz? It, Moretz. It goes either way. and welcome to the Rudolph Ersprung Gymnasium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. I am Matt Florjancic alongside Cooper Moretz for tonight's game between the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets and the Mountain Union Purple Raiders men's basketball action here on the BW Athletics website. And right now we're about seven and a half minutes from tip off, taking a look at tonight's game, the Yellow Jackets enter with a 10 and seven record, five and five in the Ohio Athletic Conference. However, they have suffered two straight defeats. First, 102-89 to the fifth ranked team in the country, the John Carroll University Blue Streaks, and 96 to 88 over the weekend to the Muskingum Fighting Muskies. Both of those losses have come here at the Ersprung Gymnasium. This is the third of four straight games at home for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets and they're looking to get the ship righted quickly here against the Purple Raiders. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned uh, those two losses um, and really a brutal stretch for the Yellow Jackets. You have John Carroll, who's the top 10 team in the country, then uh, Muskingum, but then this week you have uh, Mount Union tonight, and then uh, Saturday, quick turnaround, uh, you play Marietta. So three of the top top teams in the country, three of the top teams in the conference. So certainly a huge stretch of games for the Yellow Jackets, and they need to get one tonight to get back on track. A little bit of a meat grinder in the schedule, and like you said, they need to get back on track with a victory. They also need a victory to stay above the 500 mark. On the flip side of the ledger, the Mount Union uh, Purple Raiders come in with a 12 and five overall record. They are eight and two in the Ohio Athletic Conference. No surprise there as those two losses came to the top teams in the division. But this is a team that can put up a lot of points. When you look at Mount Union, they've averaged better than 85 and a half points per game and they are outscoring their opponents by better than five per contest. When you look at the last game that these two teams had though, on December 2nd, in Alliance, it was an instant classic, a two overtime affair that the Mount Union Purple Raiders won by a point, 110 to 109. Doesn't get much better or more competitive than that. Double overtime game between two rivals. No, you're absolutely right, especially when uh, uh, Cam Kuhn has 51 to go along with that instant classic, as you said. Um, I, I think, well, maybe not a two overtime game, but I think you, you have to look to, um, that you have to, you have to, you have to look to see that there's probably going to be another another instant classic on, on hand tonight. Well, when you talk about Cam Coon, he is the st straw that stirs the drink for this Yellow Jackets team in 17 games, all of which he has started. He's averaged better than 33 minutes a game and 22.1 points per contest. He leads the Yellow Jackets by nearly 10 points per game over the next highest score, scorer, Jake Featherolf. And looking at Coon's statistics, it's not just the gaudy point stats, it's the percentages in which he shoots. He's 42.9% from the field, 
42.3% from three-point range and 88.5% from the charity stripe. He's gotten to the line 104 times, and he's come away with points on 92 of those trips. This young man knows how to put the ball in the hoop no matter where he is on the floor. An exciting player to watch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you said it, BW kind of goes as he goes, and he's really struggled the last uh, couple games. He, uh, last game against Muskingum, he was in the 20s. But uh, before that, um, those two top teams in the conference, uh, Marietta and John, or excuse me, uh, John Carroll, uh, really held, uh, put him in check. And even a couple games before that, uh, he, uh, he was really, uh, he, didn't, he didn't score 20 points, I think three straight games. So hopefully uh, that game against Muskingum gets him going and hopefully uh, he has another big game today. That's true. That game against Mountain Union earlier this year really set off a string for Cameron Kuhn of record setting performances. In addition to the record 51 points that he had, he also uh, tied the school record with nine three pointers in a single game. And then on the next outing, he went a school record 15 for 15 from the charity stripe in a victory 80 to 69 over the Otterbein Cardinals. But Cameron Kuhn and the Yellow Jackets are gonna have a stern test on their hands looking at the Purple Raiders. They come in with four scorers averaging in double figures and a fifth only three tenths of a point away from double figures. This is a well-balanced machine that Mike Fuline has on his hands right now, and they are going to be a, a stern test for this Yellow Jackets team. Yeah, Mount Union's a team that likes to get up and down the floor. Um, coming into the game, averaging uh, almost 86 points a game, and they're really they're giving up almost 81 points a game. So certainly uh, they stress offense a little more than defense, which I think plays into BW's hands because uh, they also like to get up and down the floor, so certainly expect a, a pretty high-scoring game tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at the defensive percentages for Mount Union, they're about on pace with what they score, which is why the point differential is less than 10. Uh, when you look at it, Mount Union shoots 47% from the field. Their opponents shoot 44 from three-point range. It's 38.6% for and 37 against where Mount Union makes up their biggest difference is they're a 73% free throw shooting team and their opponents shoot their 66.2% from the line. So they're barely making two out of every three where Mount Union's making three out of nearly every four. So that's a huge difference and something to watch uh, down the stretch. If VW has to follow their way uh, into staying in the game, uh, just something to keep an eye on. Mountain Union knows how to knock down the free throws, but fortunately for the Yellow Jackets, they do as well. 74% from the charity stripe this season. Yeah, I mean, you said it earlier, Cam Kuhn kind of leading the way and getting to the free throw stripe. I mean, he, he's the one that really uh, primarily has the ball. Um, he plays 33 minutes a game. So down the stretch, I mean, I think you uh, really, I, I don't know if you could give an edge to either team because both teams do shoot the free throws uh, fairly well, and both teams are extremely uh, good from behind the three-point line, so uh, certainly I would never say either team is out of it uh, if, they're, if they're within a couple points. This is going to be one of those games that if it gets to a 10-point lead, it's going to be back to three within a heartbeat because the, the talent and the ability to shoot the basketball, both teams can do it. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this Yellow Jacket team personally comes out and plays tonight knowing that they've got just – four more home games the rest of the way and this is a critical stretch for them and they could help stem the tide and keep themselves in the top half of the OAC standings with a victory a loss means that it's a tougher road to hoe as they still have Marietta on Sunday at, or Saturday rather at home and then they have the trip across town to John Carroll on February 10th so a lot of challenges still in front of this Yellow Jacket team but uh, as the tournament motto goes, so goes the regular season. You never talk about the hill that you have to climb until you climb the one in front of you. And tonight that hill is represented by the Purple Raiders of the University of Mount Union. Currently, these teams are three and four in the OAC standings. John Carroll is in front with a 17-0 unblemished record. They are 10-0 in the OAC. Marietta's 15-2, 9-1 in the OAC. Mountain Union at 12 and 5 and 8 and 2 comes in at third, and BW is currently tied with the Capital Crusaders at 5 and 5 in conference play. They are one game better 
in the overall standings. Right now, we are going to pause and step aside for the playing of our national anthem. everyone to the Ersprung Gymnasium here on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. We are about set for the tip off. The only thing we have to do is introduce the starters and right now taking a look at the Purple Raiders. They will start six foot one senior guard Jake Jakubek and joining him in the backcourt will be six three senior guard out of green Evan Kieslar on the wing. It'll be six foot one senior guard out of Stowe Kyle Skelza in the front court. It'll be a six foot two junior, the Allen Jackson. And then in the middle, it'll be a six foot five inch forward out of a massive Nordonia High School, Jared Ruffin. That is the starting five that Mike Fuline will put out there for the Purple Raiders. On the flip side of the floor, First year uh, BW coach Tom Heil will uh, go with six foot junior guard out of Hudson, Zach Brandy. Joining him in the backcourt will be six foot freshman guard out of Gehenna Lincoln High School, Jay Battle. On the wing, it'll be a six foot five inch sophomore out of Madonna, Mike Kaminsky. Joining him on the wing will be six foot one inch sophomore guard out of Vermillion, Cam Coon. And in the middle, it'll be the six seven sophomore from Norwalk, Jake Featherolf. Featherolf will be wearing that protective mask to uh, protect a broken nose. This will be his third game wearing that mask. And we will see how it affects, if it affects his play today. Yeah, it didn't uh, really affect his play last game he had. Uh, double double on uh, one of his best games of the year. Uh, I talked to him this afternoon. He said that um, he's looking to wear uh, tonight and probably Saturday, and after that, he should be uh, back to normal. Well, we have this time, I want to remind everybody that today's Yellow Jacket basketball game is being brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Olympic Forest is committed to sustainability. Domino's Pizza, call us in Berea at 440-891-0030 or go online at dominoes.com. The Oriole Cafe, a great place for sports, located at 294 North Rocky River Drive, less than two minutes from the Berea campus. The Hoffman Group, for all of your insurance and risk management needs, the Ohio Education Credit Union gained the advantage. The Ohio Education Credit Union offers convenience, trust, and value. Build your future today. Medical Mutual of Ohio. Medical Mutual is a healthcare provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Mount Union will go from left to right, BW right to left. BW in the home whites with the yellow or with the gold and brown trim, gold numerals and brown lettering with gold trim on the chest. Mount Union going with the purple jerseys and black numerals with white trim down the sides. Mount Union controls the tip. Ball on the right wing. It goes inside and there is a foul called on the floor, it's gonna go against Featherolf. That's not a good sign, 13 seconds into the game as he has trouble matching up with Jared Ruffin, who got a step on him and got into the lane rather quickly. Yeah, that's a tough matchup for him. He's gonna have to do a better job 
Skelza catches the inbounds pass on the baseline. His shot is too strong off the side of the rim. However, Mount Union gets a rebound. It's the Allen Jackson. He takes it right to the hoop, and he's going to the line to shoot a pair of free throws after he was fouled in the act of shooting. Foul goes against Mike Kaminsky. That's his first. That's two on the Jackets, and we're 21 seconds into the ball game. Yeah, if you're Mount Union, you have to be happy to get one of your best players back from injury as he makes the first one. But, I mean, this is only his third game played, and um, he proved to be one of the best players in the OAC last year, so certainly a, a big boost for them. Both Jackson and Skelza have missed a considerable amount of time due to injury, but both are in the lineup today, and Jackson completes the pair. It's 2-0 Purple Raiders. Battle will work the ball across the timeline for the Jackets. He's on the right side of the floor. Heavily taped left wrist. Now he'll switch over to the left hand. Crossover back to the right, gets to the lane, kicks it over to Featherolf, and he'll drop in the 12-footer from the baseline to tie the game, and that's going to be a double dribble in the backcourt for Mountain Union as Jakubek picked it up, initially tried to head man an outlet pass, saw that the teammate wasn't looking, and then he put it back on the deck, and the referee trailing the play whistled him for the infraction. Mount Union tips away the initial inbound pass from Kuhn to battle. And now, instead of being at roughly half court, the Jackets are going to have to go the full 94. They got eight seconds to get it across, too. Kuhn has the ball. He's going to jog it up the court and get it across the timeline. On the left side of the floor now, he's looking for a screen. He gets one. Kind of waves it off. Now he'll get to the line, get into the lane, kicks it out to the corner. It goes to Kaminsky. His triple try is too strong. The rebound pulled down by the Raiders. It's Jackson pushing it the other way with tempo. Into the lane he goes. His floater is up. It dances on the rim a couple times, but no good. Mountain Union gets the rebound, however. Skelza will fire up a quick trigger triple, and he's off the mark. Rebound of the Jackets. Going the other way, it's Brandy. Brandy in the lane with some nifty ball handling, but he's too strong off the glass. And Mountain Union will get it going the other way. Out front it goes to Ruffin. He'll set a screen after passing it to Jacobek. Jacobek crosses up a defender. Step back jumper. It's true. Four to two. Mountain Union goes back in front. 18-20 to go here in the first half. The pace of this game has been unbelievable for the first two minutes so far. Frenetic is probably a good way to describe it. It is up and down, and these two teams aren't afraid to go after each other. Brandy with the ball on the left wing. He swings it in the post to Featherolf. Featherolf is triple teamed. He goes up in traffic, and he gets the layup to go. Pretty what good. a good, strong move inside. Great find by Brandy to see the mismatch, and Jake was able to do what he does best. Not often you could say a guy getting triple teamed is mismatch, but actually that was the case. Going the other way. Jackson got the ball to go. There was a foul called, but it's going to be an offensive foul as the defender was set outside of the restricted area. So that is Mount Union's first foul of the half. Brandy takes the inbound pass along the baseline. He'll dribble it up the floor, calling out for some help. Not getting much as of yet. Now Battle will take it right between the circles. Dribble off to the right wing. Battle off top to Brandy. He's looking for the reversal. It's not there, so he goes to Featherolf on the left low block. Featherolf gets tied up, but he's going to get fouled as Kieslar reached in there. A little bit too greedy on that play. Like the aggressiveness, but he got a little bit too much of the arm. Yeah, Kiesler hasn't really seen a ton of action this year. It's only, I mean, it's his 15th game play, but only 90 minutes recorded on the year. So I don't know what, uh, even, so he must have had a good week of practice. but Or it was a matchup thing. You never tell. Featheroff catches the inbounds pass from battle, and he goes up for the uncontested layup and puts the Yellow Jackets in front for the first time. 6-4, to 17-17 to go and a half. Jackson will run the show in between the circles. He's looking to get to the lane. He does. But there is a foul called by the official on the baseline. Foul is going to go against number 22, Zach Warner, the six foot four senior out of Clyde, who checked into the ball game just a moment ago. Inbound pass goes to the corner. That's where the Jackets wanted it, actually. They could have trapped, but 
Mountain Union dribbles away out of it. Now roughing in the post. He'll kick it out to Kieslar. He fires too strong on the three-pointer, nearly tipped in by Featherall, but he'll control the defensive rebound after a, a, a few seconds of uh, breath holding and hoping that the ball didn't go in. Now Brandy will fire up a three on the kick out from Featheroff, and he'll knock it down for the Jackets. Nine to four, BW goes in front. Good pass from the low block by Featheroff, not really under control, so he couldn't do an offensive move, but he had the presence of mind to get it to a teammate that had a good look. Ruffin in the lane will get a tip back to drop, and he'll cut the BW lead to three now. Is Brandy going the other way? He works it across the timeline. Out on the left wing, it's Takoon. He'll fire it out to Featheroff out top. Triple try up, and it'll rim out rough in the rebound for the Raiders. Pushing it the other way, it's Jakubek. He goes up in a lane, and it's good. Cam Coon was there, but he didn't want to pick up the cheap foul. So now it's a one-point advantage for the Yellow Jackets with 15.55 to go in the half. Coon on the wing. Kicks it to Brandy now at the elbow. It's Featheroff. His shot is off back iron. Rebound to Kieslar. Kieslar will head man the ball. And now it goes inside to Ruff, and he's double teamed by Battle and by Warner. And to no avail, that won't work for the Jackets as Ruffin goes right at the hoop and gets the layup to go. Mount Union with a nice little run here. They're back in front, 10 to 9. Ruffin's going to be a tough guard for uh, BW tonight. I think he's certainly proven his strength already. Battle will hoist from three-point range. It's off the mark, and rebound is pulled down by Mount Union. BW hasn't been able to get many second-chance looks tonight. Mount Union's been living and dying with those second- and third-chance points. Going the other way, Ruffin drives to the hoop, and it's swatted away from the basket, but Featheroff will get whistled for the goaltend. Count the bucket for the Purple Raiders. Now it's a three-point edge. Some substitutions now for the Purple Raiders. J.J. Kakura checks into the ball game, as does Taylor Moore. They'll join Skelza. Jakubek on the floor. Now running the point for the Jackets is Brandon Gleam. He's on the floor with Kuhn or Warner, Battle, and Ryan Walsh. Cody Dillon also into the game for Mount Union. Inbound pass goes to Kuhn. He's in the right corner of the gym. He's going to try to dribble out. He crosses over a few times before he throws it away at the top of the key. Looks like he had Walsh, but one was thinking one and one was going the other way. But Mount Union will return the favor as there was some miscommunication on a cross-court pass, and it sailed into a couple of BW assistant coaches. Yeah, a couple uh, unforced errors if you're Mount Union early. I mean, you know, you run in the... Uh, the fast-paced offense, you're going to have that, but as Warner makes a missing layup, excuse me. Great look by Battle inside, but it just didn't go. And now going the other way, Mount Union is off the mark as Skelza misses a three, put-back attempt is no good. Kuhn will pull down the board, and he'll push it up the floor. He's got Battle on the far side. Battle catches it, has to swing it over to a teammate. It's Warner now. He'll hand back to Battle. Battle on the left wing, one dribble out top. It goes to Kuhn in the center circle. Kuhn will put it on the deck with the right hand, get a screen, now looking to cut inside. Back to Battle. Battle will pull the trigger on a triple and he'll knock it down for the Yellow Jackets, knotting this game up at 12 apiece with 13.55 to go in the half. He's played really well for Baldwin Wallace for just being a freshman. He, he's certainly uh, grown up so far this year. Jacobek with the ball on the right wing. He'll swing it over left, now out to Skelza between the circles. It'll go down low, but it'll be batted away from the Purple Raiders, and Battle will come up with it. Over to Kuhn on the right side of the floor. It goes Kuhn to the lane. He fires up a 17-footer. It's off back iron. Rebound pulled down by the Jackets. It's Warner. Now it goes back out again to Gleam, and he'll knock down the three-pointer. 15 to 12, Jackets back in front. Good team ball, and finally an offensive rebound. That's the best time to shoot a three. J. 
Jackenbeck out front, gets to the lane. He'll throw up a floater. Was trying to look for a pass. It wasn't there, but actually Kakura will pick up the loose change on the offensive rebound and get the put back to go. 15-14, Jackets lead by a point. Battle off on the right wing. He'll give it to Gleam back to battle. He'll fire up another three, and he'll bottom that one out as well. 18-14, Jackets in front. 12.44 to go in the half. Jackets are starting to heat up a little bit from three-point range. They love to shoot the three. And they're looking to take advantage of uh, some inside size as well as now they're switching to a 2-3 zone, but that leaves Mountain Union open for a three-pointer. However, Kakura is off the mark, and Battle will rebound the ball. He'll push it the other way. Thought about a shot, now gives it to Kuhn on the right wing. Kuhn drives all the way to the hoop, kisses it up off glass and good. The baby jumper from three feet will go down. 20 to 14, Jackets in front, 12-16 to go in the first half, and there is a 30-second timeout by the Purple Raiders. While we have this time, I want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket basketball game is being brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division, the health care provider for BW Athletics. Parkway Auto Care in Berea, Strongsville Express Tire and Auto Service, and in Montville, we serve the southwestern suburbs of Greater Cleveland. American International, when you require a company with a proven performance, rely on American International. The Comfort Inn in Middleburg Heights, where your comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests, and Courtyard by Marriott and Town Place Suites in Middleburg Heights. Have you stayed at a Marriott today? Good little burst by this Yellow Jacket team to force Mountain Union into using that first time out. Coach Fuline wanted definitely to slow down the tempo a little bit. A little bit of a line change as well as coming into the game for the first time is Michael Scholl for the Purple Raiders. Scholl will swing it out to the left wing. Now on top it goes to Dylan. Dylan reverses the ball and he'll get it right back on the left side of the floor. Thought about a step back triple. Now it goes back to Jackson. Jackson wanted the inside pass. It wasn't there, so he'll drive. Out to Kakura. His triple try is up, and finally he finds the bottom of the net. After missing his first two, he'll bury that one and make it a three-point game. Jackets in front, 2017. Gleam uh, thought about the triple fake. Did actually now hits Kaminsky with a pass. He'll swing it over to Peters. Peters goes to the line, goes to the lane, and gets the jumper to fall. It's a five-point BW edge with 11.24 to go here in the first half. Jackson swings it to Kakura. He'll get it right back. Now he'll give it right back. Kakura is going to try to drive and got the baseline shut off, but he found Taylor Moore, the 6'6 senior out of North Canton Hoover High School, and he'll go up in traffic to draw the foul on one of the Jackets. There were a host in the area that could have been called on but this zone defense, though, while it's given up some open looks at threes, it's really making Mount Union work to get inside, which is good because Mount Union has a size advantage. Yeah, absolutely. The thing with that, though, is you got to make sure you're rebounding out of the zone, which Baldwin Wallace has struggled with this year. But uh, so far, they've done a pretty good job of they've, that. In my opinion, they've actually done a better job rebounding out of the zone than they have the man defense tonight. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a little unconventional and not something that you necessarily draw up. But so far, that zone defense has worked for Tom Heil and the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're really scrambling out of the zone really well and making them, making them work. Moore completes the pair. It's a three-point game now, 22-19, to 11.06 to go in the first half. Gleam will push the ball across the timeline for the Jackets. He'll get a screen. He thought about a triple. Now he'll swing it over to the left wing. It goes to Peters. Back to Green or Gleam now, rather, on the right wing. He'll get another screen, and this time he will fire up the three, and he'll knock it down for the Yellow Jackets. 25-19. Jackets up by six. 10-41 to go in the half and they are starting to catch fire from three-point range. Yeah, already five of eight so far in, in the first half. Dillon tries to answer with a triple of his own for the Raiders. It's no good. The rebound goes uncontested, out of bounds. Last touch by Mount Union. BW will get the ball. Mount Union backing off that full court press. They're going more three-quarter court, just token defensive pressure, and now they'll sink into his zone. So this plays into the Yellow Jackets' hands for getting more three-point looks. Gleam thought about it. He'll hit Peters on the left wing. Peters tried to drive. It wasn't there, so out it goes. Gleam now with the ball on the right wing. 
He'll dribble out top, kick it over to Peters. He thought about a triple inside to Feather off the 14 footer, rattles out. Rebound is batted around. It went out of bounds, but before it could, the referee on the near sideline whistled Baldwin Wallace for a foul. I think they're going to get Kaminsky. Yeah, that's his second. And uh, just like that, Tom Heil will summon Zach Warner off the bench at the next stoppage in play. He will get a change up. Jackson on the left wing. He gets to the elbow. Now kicks it over to Scholl. Scholl in the corner. He'll find a Kakura, and Kakura starting to heat up from three-point range. That's two in a row now. 25-22, Jackets in front in this three-point shooting contest. Leem on the right wing. Skips it into the left corner to Dylan Nito. Nito is off the mark. Rebound goes to the Raiders. Scholl pushing it the other way. Out top it goes to Dillon. Dillon drives all the way to the rack. Too strong. Rebound pulled down by Featheroff. He's looking for the outlet. It goes to Gleam. Gleam across the timeline. Waiting for the trailer. Fakes the screen. Now it goes into the right corner. Dillon Nito with the ball. Now he's swung it out top to Gleam. Gleam double team momentarily between the circles. Now he'll pick up his dribble. He'll swing it over to Kaminsky. Kaminsky now to Featheroff on the right side of the floor. Back out to Kaminsky. His triple try is up with the shot clock winding down. Mike Kaminsky will bury that triple for the Jackets. 28-22, BW in front, 8.40 to go and a half. Kakura will try to answer with a dribble drive, but he left it short, and the Jackets pick up the loose change. Gleam jogs across the timeline. Now he'll pick up the tempo. He'll swing it over to the right wing. It was Danito. Nito thought about the three. Now tried to drive inside. He picks up the foul and should go to the line to shoot two as a defender was in the restricted area. Yeah, another uh, guy that really hasn't got that much playing time, but um, Coach Heil seems to trust him, uh, a young freshman in this situation in a big game, so certainly some good experience for, for him tonight. Oh, without question, this, this experience is invaluable. Not to date myself too much, but when I was in school, we had a lot of freshmen that played on the teams I broadcasted for, and those freshmen ended up being the junior and senior leaders that carried this team to back-to-back -to -back OAC championship titles in 2005 and 2006. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have three freshmen already playing tonight with Nito, Peters, and uh, um, Battle. So certainly the same thing that Coach Heil might be trying to implement. Future looks bright for this Yellow Jacket team if they can keep everybody healthy and add some pieces and parts around them. Nito splits the pair, gives the Jackets a seven-point advantage. Kuhn will check back into the ball game. Mountain Union's Ruffin has the ball in the extended block. He's going to drive against Featheroff, get the defender in the air, and get the left-handed shot up off glass and good. Five-point edge for the Jackets now, 29-24, just under eight minutes to go in the half. Peters with the ball on the left side. He'll kick it to Kuhn on the left wing. Kuhn will swing it over right wing to Featheroff. Now back to Peters. Peters working inside. He throws up a wild shot in traffic. It doesn't go for him, and Mount Union will push the other way. Jacobek working against Kuhn. Gets a screen from Ruffin. Thought about pulling up for the three. Gets to the line. Gets to the lane. Gets a shot up off the rim. It's no good. Peters with the board for BW, and Peters slams on the brakes right in front of Coach Heil to get the ball to the point guard. A little, a little bit ahead of himself, and I think Coach Heil had a word for him to say, hey, get the ball to the, the guy used to handling it. Speaking of the guy used to having a handle on it, it's Brandy out top between the circles. He'll swing it over to the right wing to Kuhn. Seven on the shot clock. Kuhn will pull up, and he'll bury a triple for the Yellow Jackets. 32-24. BW goes in front. 6.53 to go. That's already their seventh three-pointer of the night. BW shooting the lights out from three-point range. We'll see how long Mountain Union sits in a zone defensively. Ruffin with a step back two, foot on the line, it's too strong. There is a foul on the floor, and that really hurts the Yellow Jackets because they got a defensive rebound, limited Mount Union to one and done, but now they're gonna have to start over with a fresh shot clock after 
a, a second foul on Zach Warner in the game. That's never good. And BW starting to get a couple guys that are getting into foul trouble now. They're going to have to lengthen that bench a little bit and shorten up the rotations. Three-pointer on the way from the Purple Raiders. It's off the mark. Skelza had a good look at it, but his feet weren't set. And BW gets the rebound. Kuhn across the timeline, now between the circles. He's going to get to the line, spins into the lane, and he's going to get fouled in the act of shooting. What a move right there. Quick as a hiccup on the spin move, created some space, and drew the contact from the defense. Yeah, we have some really quick guards out here tonight. I mean, the Allen Jackson and Cam Kuhn are some of the quickest guards in the OAC, and when they're at their best, they're fun to watch. He is deceptively fast as Kuhn. He jogs across the timeline, and doesn't really move a whole lot. And then when he needs to, man, he steps on the accelerator and finds another gear. However, his first shot from the charity stripe is off the back iron. He'll look to split the pair. And he will do just that. Put the Yellow Jackets now in front by nine, 33-24, 6.20 to go here in the first half. Skelza swings it inside, it gets kicked out to Jacobek. His triple try is off the side of the rim, and a rebound is pulled down by the smallest guy on the floor, Zach Brandy. Brandy over to Kuhn on the left side of the floor. Kuhn across the timeline. He'll swing it over to Featherall. Thought about the three, now he'll try to dribble drive, and he's going to draw a foul on Ruffin. Ruffin kind of got caught in no man's land defensively. He sort of jumped, but also never really had his feet set, so as soon as the contact was made, he knew he was going to be the guilty party, and you know that he knew that he was uh, the one that committed the foul because he didn't complain about it. Yeah, absolutely. An easy call for the ref. Battle will swing it out between the circles to Warner, and he'll hustle right back to get it. He'll drive all the way to the rack and get the high arcing shot off glass to go. 35-24, BW in front. BW still in that zone defense. We'll see what Mount Union does. They try to attack it. It's Jackson. His shot's too strong, and Battle will battle for the board. And living up to his name, he'll draw a foul against the Mount Union Purple Raiders. You mentioned it earlier. I mean, BW, I think, is they're doing a great job rebounding out of the zone, which historically has been harder for teams to, but... They're doing a better job rebounding out of the zone than in, in, in the man. Yeah, they really are, and it's it's led to some good opportunities for this Yellow Jacket team, and because that was the seventh foul on the Purple Raiders, the Jackets will head to the other side of the floor to shoot a one-and-one. One. Mountain Union called a timeout. It's a full timeout on the floor. Coach Fuline did not like what he saw from his Purple Raiders, and I have to tell you, I wouldn't either because this team is getting out-rebounded by it a smaller Yellow Jacket team, which in a zone historically has struggled with the rebounding, but that's not the case tonight. I really like the way that the Yellow Jackets have started this game, at least from an adjustment standpoint. They saw something wasn't working in their rebounding. They made a slight tweak to it, and now all of a sudden they're rebounding better, and they're holding Mount Union to one shot instead of two and three as they were getting on the early possessions, which is why they jumped out to an early lead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're flying around on the defensive end. They're really making it tough, tough for Mount Union. Uh, and you know, they've got they're really committing five guys on the on the defensive end. And like you said, one shots, and then they're then they're out and going. And um, that really uh, favors the the BW offense. Battle will tow the line to our left for a one and one on the year. 25 of 41, just 61 percent for the freshman out of Gehenna Lincoln High School. He'll put it on the deck three times, eye up the rim, aim, fire, and knock down the front end. The battle earns himself a second free throw. Trying to complete the pair and extend the lead to 13. Shot on its way, and it's good for the Jackets. 37-24, BW leads Mountain Union with 5.30 to go here in the half. Skelza on the right wing. 
It gets reversed over to Dillon on the left wing. Dillon one time on the deck, now passes out to uh, Kieslar. Kieslar drives all the way to the hoop and gets the bank shot to go. 37-26, Mount Union trims the deficit to 11. Battle will work the ball across the timeline along the near sideline. He'll get a double screen out top, get to the right wing, looking for the pass out top. It wasn't there, so he'll give it to Brandy. Brandy will back it out all the way to, between the circles. Now over to Kuhn on the left wing. Kuhn head fakes, now gets to the top of the key. His three-pointer is off the mark. Rebound pulled down by the Raiders. Jakovic on the right wing. Out top to Skelza. It gets reversed into the corner to Kieslar. Now to Dillon. Back to Skelza, who swings it right back to Dillon. Dillon on the left wing. He'll skip it, skip it to Jakobek. Jakobek will drive along the baseline, kick it out to Kieslar. Kieslar in the lane, passes back to Jakobek. His triple try is too strong. Rebound, Featherolf of uh, the Yellow Jackets. Battle with the ball out top. He'll get a screen from Featherolf. Now he'll try to work back into the contact by the defender and no avail as Jakobek will shut off the lane. He'll swing the ball to Kuhn. Kuhn working against a double team. His shot is no good. And Kieslar made a crucial error on a, as a defender. He thought the ball was last touched by Kuhn. He deflected it and he let it ricochet out of bounds so the Yellow Jackets will retain possession with 11 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, really good defensive play by uh, Kiesler there. I mean, the force came to shoot a tough shot. Just one thing he didn't do was grab the ball, and now BW with three seconds left on the shot clock. It's battle hoisting from well behind the three-point line. It's off the mark. Rebound to Jakobek. So the miscue doesn't hurt the Purple Raiders as they'll go the other way now. Dylan in the left corner. Entry pass to Ruffin. Ruffin will square up the hoop, drawing a double team momentarily. Out to Skelza on the right wing. Skelza in the lane, throws up a floater up off glass and good. 37-28, Mount Union trails the Yellow Jackets with 3.34 to go. But now, Mount Union starting to get some penetration against that 2-3 zone. Kuhn with the ball on the left wing. He'll dribble between the circles, checked by Ruffin. Now he'll pull up at the elbow, and his shot will go. Jackets back in front by double digits. 39-28 over Mount Union with 3.14 to go and a half. Skelza to Dillon. Dillon to Ruffin. Ruffin will try to drive along the baseline, and he'll draw the foul against Peters. So Ruffin will go to the line to shoot one and one as that is now the seventh team foul on the Yellow Jackets this first half. That's a pretty tough matchup if you're Michael Peters uh, to ask him to guard Ruffin who's got a couple inches and a couple pounds on him. Every bit of six foot five and every bit of probably the most muscular and strong player on the floor for either team. His free throw attempt is up, and he'll get a second one as he knocks that one down, nothing but net. Ruffin is a very gifted athlete, but he also is very self-aware of his size and how to use his abilities. This young man is fun to watch. His shot, second shot is up, and it's good as well. 39-30, Jackets lead trim the nine. Three minutes to go in the half. Heil signals in the play from the bench. Battle gets it, and he's working between the circles. Puts the ball between the legs with his right hand, now dribbles off to the right wing. Gets it stripped momentarily. Now he'll try to dribble inside, out to Kuhn it goes. Kuhn will back it out all the way back to the timeline with eight seconds left on the shot clock. Six seconds, he'll pull up for the three, and it's good! Cameron Kuhn buries another one for the Jackets, 42. The 30, BW in front, two and a half to go here in the first half. Ruffin trying to answer with a triple of his own and he'll do just that. 42 to 33, Jackets still in front, lead under 10 though. Battle with the ball on the right side of the floor. He'll swing it over to Brandy on the right wing. Brandy to the line, to the lane, goes out to Kuhn on the left side of the floor. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. He'll pull up with a step back jumper. It's too strong and rough and he'll secure the board for the Raiders. Jakobek with the ball on the left wing, gets a screen, now swings it over to Skelza. His triple try is off the mark, rebound Featherolf. He'll hand off to Brandy. 
Isles screaming at Brandy to uh, get the ball across the timeline to battle, and as soon as he does, BW will signal for the timeout. It'll be a 20-second timeout with 1.45 to go here in the half. Baldwin Wallace leads Mount Union 42 to 33. Good bit of action from behind the three-point line by both teams so far here in this first half. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mount Union shooting 30%, uh, but they've shot 10 threes already. Uh, and if you're Baldwin Wallace, you, you have to be more than happy to be shooting eight of 13 from behind the three-point line already here uh, in the first half. Uh, I mean, that's uh, more than half their points coming from the three-point line. Yeah, 24 of 42 points coming from three-point range, and they're actually shooting better from three-point range than they are from inside the arc. Eight of 13 versus five, 15 of 29. So, Yellow Jacket team finding their groove early from long distance. We'll see if they're able to keep it up. Kuhn walking the ball in the front court on the left side of the floor, gets a screen from Featherall. Defensive switch, now a double team, and he'll have to pass off to Gleam. Gleam over to Battle, now to Kuhn. Kuhn's triple try is no good. Rebound to Ruffin. I don't know how he did it, but he stayed in bounds with possession of the ball before he could swing it to a teammate, and the Purple Raiders will secure the possession. Out top, the ball goes to Dillon. Dillon's going to drive, but he's going to get whistled for the offensive foul. Stepping up and taking the contact is Brandon Glean, the 5'10 junior, stepped into the lane and got sent to his backside, but maintained the contact and drew the offensive foul. Battle gets it across the timeline now between the circles. He'll pass left side to Kuhn. Kuhn looking for Featheroff. Featheroff floating to the low block. He'll put it on the deck twice with the right hand. Raise up over Ruffin, and he'll get the shot to go. Featheroff finds the bottom of the net. That's number. Or that's eight points now for the big man. Ruffin on the right corner. He'll swing it over to Kakura. Kakura out top to Jacobek. Jacobek looking for Dillon. Now Dillon will swing it. 15 foot baseline jumper from Ruffin is off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Kuhn. And the Yellow Jackets can use all of it. All the remaining 20 seconds to go here in the first half. Battle off left side to Kuhn. Kuhn will dribble to the center circle right on the BW logo. Now he'll reset and charge toward the right wing. Gets into the lane, lost a handle on it. It's picked up by Gleam. Gleam out to Featheroff. He loses a handle on it. Jakobek hits the deck. Ruffin and Featheroff will collide at center court on the deck as both men giving themselves up. And uh, the loose ball will not be corralled by anyone before the first half expires. So the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets will take a 44-33 edge into the halftime break. Hot shooting start for this Yellow Jacket team here in the first half, and that is a large reason why they enjoy an 11 point advantage over the Purple Raiders. Yeah, I think along with uh, the hot shooting, I think you have to look uh, at that move from the man-to-man -man defense to the 2-3 uh, defense. Uh, they, when they went to that, they, they forced Mount Union to, to shoot quick shots. They were flying around on on uh, the defensive end, and they were able to corral uh, the rebounds after the first shot, so not really giving Mount Union any second chance opportunities. And really, uh, from a fundamental standpoint, the, produ the production level of Baldwin Wallace actually worked in opposite of what it's supposed to. Usually when a team struggles to rebound the balls when they're in the zone because you're not having a body on a specific man. You're just covering a specific area, and sometimes that gives people open lanes to go toward the hoop. That wasn't the case. Mount Union really couldn't rebound the ball offensively, and BW did an outstanding job late, especially over that last 10 minutes of play in that first half, to limit Mount Union to one shot on the offensive end, and those second chance points make all the difference in the world. When you're talking about a team that has pulled down 183 offensive rebounds in 17 games. So better than 10 offensive rebounds a game for this Mount Union team. And after the first five to 10 minutes, BW really 
put that into control and took really took control of the glass, which is something that allowed them to build their lead, as you said. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think along with that, you know, BW kind of played within themselves. They didn't really try to push the ball. I mean, they, they pushed the ball when they could and when they had opportunities, but really in the half court, they kind of slowed it down um, and they were really efficient um, in, in, the, in the half court set. I mean, shooting eight of 14 from three helps. Uh, 51, almost 52% overall from the field uh, also helps. So, um, and you know, they limited their they limited, limited their turnovers. They only had one turnover in, in the entire first half. So, all those things put together, I mean, gives you an 11 point lead at halftime. Yeah, and they, the Yellow Jackets really did a good job to avoid what could have been a disaster early on because in addition to giving up those offensive rebounds, BW gave up a lot of cheap fouls on the defensive end. There were a couple guys that had to sit some major minutes with two fouls. Uh, taking a look at that for Baldwin Wallace, picking up the two fouls of Zach Warner off the bench who was into the game to help out Mike Kaminsky who had picked up two quick fouls. Uh, that was not the case though as the Yellow Jackets found a way to stem the tide defensively and hold a Mountain Union team that shoots better than 47% from the floor to 38.7%, 12 of 31 in the first half of three of 10 from a three point range, which is also under their normal average of 38.6%. Taking a look at the team totals for the first half, as we mentioned, Mount Union 12 of 31 from the field and three of 10 from three point range. They made all six of their free throws though. And on the other side of the ledger, Baldwin Wallace 16 of 31 from the field, eight of 14 from a three point range and four of six from the charity stripe. Although BW did a much better job in that latter half of the first half to control the rebounds, they were still out rebounded by Mount Union 18 to 16. BW holds a 14 to 13 edge in defensive rebounds. Mount Union a five to two advantage on the offensive side of the floor. BW has assisted on seven of their 16 baskets from the field. Mount Union just two assists on 12 made baskets. That's not good ball distribution and that's not looking for the open man and finding them. That's a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball that we saw early where guys were trying to attack the zone and then they would jump and get in the air. And then by that point, BW's defense had rotated to prevent the passing lane and force Mount Union into a difficult shot. Yeah, you said it. I mean, the 2-3 zone has really taken uh, the Purple Raiders kind of out of their comfort zone. I, they really never responded or reacted uh, when BW went, went to that 2-3. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they uh, make any halftime adjustments to kind of counter BW's 2-3 zone. Take me into the locker room. If you're Mike Fuline and the Purple Raiders, how are you gonna try to counteract the zone other than continuing to shoot the three-pointer and knocking down those looks because that'll get a team out of a zone really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the shots are, are probably gonna fall if you're Mount Union. You, you gotta think that they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna hit a few shots. They have so many guys that can do it. But I, I think, he, I mean, Ruffin really, I mean, he went five of six from the floor and he, and for 13 points, so certainly getting him into the mix, whether it's in the high post and letting him uh, create something out of that or the short corner, or even he can, he can step it out and shoot the three. So I, I think getting him more involved in the offense, letting him kind of do his own thing, um, will help Mount Union uh, to get back in, into this game. When you look at Jared Ruffin's performance in that first half, 13 points on five of six shooting and two of two from the charity stripe. He's also made his lone three-point attempt he has six rebounds to go along with it in just 13 minutes of action. So his productivity level is off the charts right now for the Purple Raiders. And this is a man who came in averaging 13.8 points and 7.8 rebounds over 17 starts. He's just about there in 13 minutes of action. So it tells you that this young man is on a roll tonight. Looking at the other scorers for the Purple Raiders, off the bench, J.J. Kakura, has eight points on three of five shooting, including a two for three performance from three point range. He's added a rebound in just seven minutes of action. 
Four points from Jake Jakubek on two of seven shooting. He struggled mightily as one of the five Mount Union turnovers and is just two of seven from the floor. Two points each from Evan Kieslar, Kyle Skelza, the Allen Jackson, and Taylor Moore. Looking at the Baldwin Wallace side of things on the offensive end, Cameron Kuhn leads the way with 11 points on four of nine shooting. He's two of four from three point range. Also in double figures, Jay Battle, the freshman guard, has 10 points on three of five shooting, including a two for four mark from three point range. Battle has added two defensive rebounds, one assist, and a steal in 14 minutes of action. Jake Featheroff, mask and all, has eight points and six rebounds. So again, even though he's wearing a protective mask to help out with the broken nose, it shows no ill effects as he's well on his way to a double-double. And he also has handed out two assists in 16 minutes of action. Brandon Gleam has come off the bench to add six points, three points apiece from uh, Zach Brandy and uh, Mike Kaminsky in the starting lineup. Then Michael Peters is one of two off the bench for two points and he has added a rebound in eight minutes. And then rounding out the scoring, Dylan Nito has gone one for two from the charity stripe for one point in four minutes of action. Really the only foul trouble of note for the Jackets in that first half, Kaminsky and Warner picked up two apiece, but they were not uh, whistled for that third infraction in the half, which is huge going into the second half of play. Now you don't have to worry as much about foul trouble if you're Baldwin Wallace. Right, absolutely. I mean, you said it earlier, Kaminsky and uh, um, Warner, I believe, picked up two quick ones. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, so, um, you, you know, you don't really have to worry about the foul trouble. I mean, I think if you're if you're Baldwin Wallace and Coach Heil, you're, you're just saying, you know, if you have another half like you did in the first half, you win the game. I mean, I, it's, it's, e it's easy to say, but, you know, limit your turnovers, control the ball in the half court, knock down shots, um, and you win the game, and, you, and keep rebounding out of that 2-3 zone. Well, we have this time we want to, uh, BW would like to uh, send out congratulations to seven-time All-American athlete Melanie Winters on being the Division Three National Track Athlete of the Week and teammate junior long and high jumper Aaron Casper on being this week's Ohio Athletic Conference Field Athlete of the Week. Congratulations both Melanie and Aaron. The Yellow Jacket men's basketball team is back in action here at Ersprung Gymnasium on uh, Saturday, January 30th when BW hosts OAC rival Marietta at three o'clock. In addition, on uh, Saturday, February 6th, BW will honor its 2005-2006 Ohio Athletic Conference Championship and NCAA Tournament team on Al Surratt Grotto Day. I had the pleasure of covering those Yellow Jackets on their way to their uh, second of back-to-back -back OAC Tournament Championships and uh, through two rounds of the NCAA tournament. One of the highlights of my college career was watching those young guys come together and play what was an outstanding brand of basketball all year long. The only title that Coach Steve Bankson won in the regular season in his illustrious career at BW came during the 2005-2006 season. I want to remind you that the 18th ranked Baldwin Wallace wrestling team defeated Muskingum 41 to six last night here in the Ersprung Gymnasium and is now 15 and eight overall on the season. The Yellow Jackets are back in action this Friday, January 29th at the Pete Wilson Invitational at Wheaton College outside of Chicago starting at noon. The Baldwin Wallace swimming and diving teams are back in action this Saturday as they face off at Case Western Reserve University at 1 p.m. and the BW indoor track and field team host the annual mid-January meet this Friday, January 29th, inside the Hilliard Davidson Fieldhouse right here in the Lou Higgins Center on the campus of Baldwin Wallace College. The field events start at four o'clock that day. So uh, again, recapping the first half, the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets enjoy a 44 33 advantage over the Mount Union Purple Raiders here at halftime from the Ersprung Gymnasium. And if the first game between these two teams taught us anything, we are in for one heck of a second half of action. Yeah, and I think going off that, no lead is safe. I mean, Baldwin Wallace was up 
17 in the first game, and Mount Union came back uh, to force overtime and ended up uh, winning uh, in double overtime despite Cam Coon's uh, school record scoring 51 points. So certainly, uh, if you're if you're uh, Baldwin Wallace, you still have to play with some urgency. You still have to uh, keep playing the way you did in the, in the first half, and hopefully that'll be enough for a Yellow Jacket victory. Well, a victory would be a much, much welcome sight for this Yellow Jacket team in the middle of a four-game stretch here at home. Baldwin Wallace has lost their first two on their home floor in that stretch and they need to get off the, the schneid real quick because coming in to uh, Ersprung Gymnasium on Saturday afternoon is the number two team in the league at 15-2 and two and 9-1 and one in the conference, the Marietta Pioneers. So this Yellow Jacket team, to get some confidence going into that game, definitely has to finish strong here in the second half of play. Yeah, I, I think they're certainly capable of that. You know, the last two games they've – they really haven't rebounded the ball very well. They haven't done a very good job on the defensive end, but um, despite that slow start uh, in both of those categories, they really, the last 15, uh, 14, 15 minutes, they, they really played really good basketball on both ends. While we have this time, we want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket basketball game is being brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Olympic Forest is committed to sustainability. Domino's Pizza, call us in Berea at 440-891-0030 or go online at www.dominos.com. The Oriole Cafe, a great place for sports, located at 294 North Rocky River Drive in less than two minutes from the Baldwin Wallace campus. The Hoffman Group, for all of your insurance and risk management needs. The Ohio Education Credit Union, gain the advantage. The Ohio Education Credit Union offers convenience, trust, and value. Build your future today. Medical Mutual of Ohio. Medical Mutual is a healthcare provider of Baldwin Wallace University. The Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division, the healthcare provider for BW Athletics. Parkway Auto Care in Berea, Strongsville Express Tire and Auto Service, and in Montville. We serve the southwestern suburbs of Greater Cleveland. American International. When you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. The Comfort Inn in Middleburg Heights, where your comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests. The Courtyard by Marriott and Town Place Suites in Middleburg Heights. Have you stayed at a Marriott today? Resetting the action for you, Baldwin Wallace will take a 44 33 lead over Mount Union into the second half of action here at the Ersprung Gymnasium. Walton Wallace looking to improve to 11 and 7 overall and uh, remain above the 500 mark in uh, the Ohio Athletic Conference. A win would give them a 6 and 5 record. They are currently tied for fourth place with the Capitol Crusaders, whereas the Mount Union Purple Raiders are in third at 12 and 5 overall and 8-2 in Ohio Athletic Conference play. A win tonight will help the Purple Raiders keep pace with the Marietta Pioneers and John Carroll Blue Streaks. You hate to say it, but a third loss on the year might do in their chances of getting the OAC regular season tournament title, or regular season title, and the number one seed in the OAC postseason tournament because of the way John Carroll and Marietta have played this year. Yeah, those uh, two teams have uh, clearly been the best two teams. I mean, they're playing really good basketball. Um, but you, you never know. A team could upset a, t a team here or there, and they're right back in it. But like you said, a third loss would be tough to, to overcome. Absolutely it would be. Baldwin Wallace will start the second half of play. They'll go from left to right across your computer screens. Battle with the ball on the left wing. He gets a screen from Featherolf. Now he'll swing it left wing to Kaminsky. Kaminsky enters it into the low post to Featherolf. Out to battle on the left wing. He'll get a screen, but he won't use it now on the drive. He dumps it to Kuhn in the low block. Kuhn to feather off the two-foot pass and the two-foot shot. Both result in a hoop for the Yellow Jackets. 46-33, BW in front. Ruffin in the left corner. He puts it on the deck twice with the right hand. Goes up with the left in traffic, and it'll rim out for him. Rebound controlled by Jakubek of the Raiders. Jakubek out front, it goes to Kiesler. In the lane, he goes up for the shot. It's no good, and he's gonna pick up another 
offensive foul. Kieslar struggling with player control fouls here in the game. Yeah, really good uh, defensive play for Jake Featheroff, the big man drawing the charge. Battle will work up the floor against pressure. Skelza providing it for the Purple Raiders. Battle, left wing pass goes to Kuhn. Kuhn one time on the deck, now to Kaminsky. Kaminsky will fire up a three, and it'll rim out for him. Mount Union fires it up the floor, and Jakubek will go all the way to the hoop before he drops it to Skelza. His triple try is in and out. Jakubek now with the ball, and he'll swing it to Jackson. He'll throw up a three-pointer, and it's off the mark. Brandy's going to push for the Jackets. He's one on three, but that doesn't stop him from pump faking and dropping it to Featheroff. He'll throw down the two-handed jam for the Jackets, 48-33. BW in front, 18-30 to go in regulation. Jakubek on the right side of the floor. He'll hand it off to Skelza. Skelza between the circles. Now to Kieslar, back to Skelza. Over to D. Allen Jackson. Jackson between the circles. Gets to the line, gets to the lane, goes up. Off glass, no good. But he's going to have two coming from the charity stripe as he was fouled in the act of shooting. Going back to that last offensive play for the Jackets. Brandy pushed against numbers. And initially you didn't know why. And then you saw Featheroff coming from behind and he opened everybody's eyes as he threw down that two-handed jam. What a great play all the way around by the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, that's the thing. You had one on three underneath the basket and four on two coming back. So uh, Brandy made a great play and he was patient and found uh, Feather off for the dunk. Jackson completes the pair, cuts the deficit to 13. It's 48-35. Baldwin Wallace in front, two minutes gone here in the second half. Brandy across the timeline over to Battle. Battle gets a signal from the coaches, and now he'll try to work it into the front, into the three-point arc, but he lost the handle on it. Mountain Union pursued it. Now it was a three-on-one advantage momentarily for the Jackets as Skelza recovers in time to make the block. He'll go over to D. Allen Jackson in the front court, and Jackson is hammered by Battle on the right hand. It was a great overall play right there defensively by the Purple Raiders to initially save the rotation on the defense and then to recover enough to get that block shot on the three-point attempt. Ruffin gets the entry pass, and his hook shot in the lane is good. 48-37, BW's lead trimmed down to 11. 17.30 to go here in the regulation. Kuhn off the right side. He swings it back left. Triple try is on the way, but it's off the mark from Warner. Now going the other way. It's Skelzo along the baseline. He finds D.L. and Jackson. His triple try is up, and it is good from the left wing. 48 to 40. BW's lead down the single digits. Three minutes gone here in the second half. Battle with the ball on the right side of the floor. Puts it on the deck twice, now kicks it into the corner to Brandy. Brandy drives the baseline, gets it up off glass, and good over the much larger Ruffin, and he'll put the lead back out to 10, 50 to 40, 16, 47 to go in that game. Modified zone for the Yellow Jackets right now. Looks sort of like a 2-3 and then a 3-2 Rover and it'll help them on the defensive glass again as the three-point shot from the Raiders is off the mark and Featheroff will corral it. BW quickly pushes the ball into the front court and it's Kuhn on the left side of the floor. Spin move again, gets to the lane, throws it into traffic. It's no good, batted away by Ruffin. Now back out top to Warner. His triple try is up and it's good for the Jackets and just like that, it's back up to 13. The advantage for the Jackets, 53 to 40. Kieslar out top. He'll swing it over to Skelza, now to Jakubek. Jakubek crosses over battle, gets to the lane, throws it up off glass. It's no good. As it hit the rim, rather, battle will control the rebound, push the tempo. Over to Warner. Warner thought about the three-pointer, but now he's going to try to drive. It's shut off, and he'll outlet to Brandy. Brandy over to battle on the far sideline. Battle slowing down the tempo momentarily. He's looking to speed it up, though, as he gets a screen out top, gets another. And 
with four seconds left on the shot clock. It's decision time for Battle. Battle goes to the lane, throws up the layup attempt, but it hit nothing but the backboard. And that is a shot clock violation against the Yellow Jackets. Not a good possession if you're, if you're Baldwin Wallace. You a lot of dribbling out front. Didn't really have a, really a, a plan a, a, as far as a, um, a play. Um, and really you end up forcing a, a bad shot and really just handing B Mount Union the ball. Yeah, not a good possession at all for the Yellow Jackets. They miss an opportunity to build on their 13 point lead. Mount Union looking to take advantage of an opportunity to trim that deficit. Skelza on the right wing. Picks up his dribble, lob pass inside to Ruffin. Is momentarily batted away, but Mount Union will retain possession. Kakura throws it inside to Ruffin. He'll hammer home the two-handed dunk, and he'll be fouled with one more coming at the line. So a chance at a three-point play for Ruffin. Excellent vision, by the way, by Kakura to find Ruffin through traffic. Yeah, it looked like Ruffin was in the short corner of the block area, and uh, great, great vision, and was able to make a big play, and let's see if maybe the momentum will shift with that play. Ruffin's attempt is on the way, it's on the mark. It's a 10 point ball game. Mount Union trims the deficit, 53-43. 14.50 to go here in regulation. Battle right wing the Coon. Coon puts it on the deck three times, raises up in the lane, gets the shot to go, and he'll have one more coming from the line as he was fouled in the act of shooting. Yeah, really, I mean, the whole game, uh, whenever Mount Union's made a big play, BW's answered it, um, the, really the next the next couple possessions, and that's why they have a 12-point lead. And they're really uh, not allowing Mount Union to go on a big run. No, they're not, and now Kuhn with a chance to put the lead back up to 13. He'll raise up, and it'll rattle in and out. The rebound almost batted out of bounds by Jared Ruffin, but the Allen Jackson is there to control it. He gets between the circles, gets to the line, gets to the lane, raises up a one-handed floater, no good, gets his own rebound back, puts it up off glass and good. Mountain Union back within 10. I have a feeling we're gonna be saying that quite a bit here in the second half as this lead is gonna go back, or this uh, basket for basket, we're gonna go. Battle thought about the triple, pulled it down. Now he's gonna put it on the deck with the left hand three times, pick it up hand, and get it handed right back to him. Lob pass inside, it goes to Walsh. And Walsh is gonna get fouled. Walsh will go to the line now to shoot two. Surprised they said that was going up in the air. I'm not sure if you really had any possession of it to, to get a shot off. You're, you're not alone as, as Mike Fuline uh, is standing with his hands outstretched and he just shook off an explanation or lack thereof from the officials. Uh, not a happy man, and I think he has a right to be a little disappointed with that call. Nevertheless, Walsh will go to the line to shoot two. The front end of the two shot foul is up and it's good. On the season, Walsh just a 59% free throw shooter, 13 of 22, so not many trips to the charity stripe for the senior forward out of Easton, Pennsylvania. His second attempt is off the mark. And it's rebounded by the Purple Raiders, D. Allen Jackson with the ball across the timeline. He'll swing it over to Dillon on the right wing. Dillon into the corner to Skelza, now to Ruffin. Ruffin bodying up Walsh. And there's gonna be a foul on Walsh. And if I'm Mount Union, I don't go a single possession without Ruffin touching the ball on the low block. Does that? Young man can definitely move some bodies inside and draw some contact. Yeah, we said it at halftime. Um, you know, there really hasn't been anyone that has guarded him tonight, and he, he's done what he wanted, what he wants, when he wants. BW, after committing the foul on Ruffin, will get whistled for a foul before the inbound pass can be thrown. Gleam picks up the holding violation. Ruffin gets the ball in the low post. He'll kick it right out to Allen on the right wing. Allen in the lane, out to Dillon. Dillon's triple try rattles in and out, but Ruffin is there for the board. Out he goes to Kakura. Kakura in the lane. He's gonna throw up a 
fadeaway floater, and it goes, and he'll have one more coming from the charity stripe. 56-47, chance for Mount Union to cut it to an eight-point deficit with 13.37 to go here in the game. Not a good stretch for the Yellow Jackets. They've given up a couple offensive rebounds, a couple fouls, and really given Mount Union some extra chances at some buckets. Yeah, and it seems like we're going back to what we started with here in the first half with BW struggling to rebound the ball on the defensive end. Kakura's and one attempt goes. It's an eight point ball game, BW in front, 56-48. Gleam will swing a pass left wing. It's Warner. Warner hands off to Kuhn, and Warner lays a shoulder into one of the Purple Raiders, and he will get whistled for the offensive foul. And after seeing the recent offensive possessions, if I'm Tom Heil, I see one more possession like that, I'm taking a timeout, and I'm having a little one-sided chat with my, my team. Kakura will trigger a triple. It's off back iron, rebound to Kuhn. Kuhn will bring it across the timeline along the far sideline. He'll get a screen from Featheroff. Now he'll try to work a one-on-one -on -one game, kick it into the corner, it goes to Gleam. His triple try is up and it's good. 59 of 48, BW in front by 11, just under 13 to go in the game. Jackson goes to Kakura at the free throw line. Kakura is off the front of the rim with his shot, but gets his put back to fall. 59 to 50, BW in front. Mount Union again trimming away at the deficit. Gleam across the timeline between the circles. Now he'll dribble off right side. He'll swing it left to Kuhn. Kuhn will put it on the deck with the left hand. Spin, right-handed shot off back iron. Rebound to Ruffin. Ruffin absorbed a lot of contact by Kuhn on that rebound attempt. No call, fortunately, for the Jackets. Kakura on the right side. Over to Dillon out top, now to Jackson. Jackson throws up a floater from 10, it's good. 59-52, Mount Union on the comeback trail. 12.07 to play here in the second half. And just as BW went to inbound the basketball, there is a double foul called. Kuhn will pick it up. Four. Kuhn will pick it up for BW, and Andrew Franciconi will pick it up for the Purple Raiders. BW has committed eight fouls in less than eight minutes. Every foul from here on out on the defensive side will result in Mount Union shooting free throws. Mount Union just four fouls here in the second half. That could be big down the stretch. Especially when Mount Union shoots better than 73% or from the charity stripe. Gleam with the ball on the right wing. He's double teamed and he'll swing it into the corner to Featheroff. Featheroff works inside, back out to Gleam. Gleam with five seconds on the shot clock will find Peters. Peters pump fake on the triple. Now he'll raise up from three and it's off the mark. Rebound to the Raiders. Jackson to push over to Kakura on the left wing. Kakura in the lane from 13. His jumper is off the mark and rebound is hustled for by Brandy. Brandy will push it across the timeline. Over to Gleam on the right wing, back to Brandy. He's gonna back it out and signal for reset. Peters with the ball. Now he'll swing it to Kaminsky. Kaminsky will put it on the deck one time over to Featheroff. He'll pull the trigger on a triple. Too strong, but, but Brandy is there for the offensive rebound. He goes up against the taller defender, corrals the loose ball, and picks up a foul in the process. Yeah, I think offensively, if you're Baldwin Wallace, you just, you're almost playing too fast. It seems like they're, they're not really getting the right shots. They're not getting good shots. and uh, Nearly throwing away inbounds yeah. passes as it's almost stolen by the Mountain Union Purple Raiders three different times, but Gleam will get possession of it, drive to the hoop, and draw a foul against the defender. Going back to your point, it's really one of those things where Mount Union is controlling the tempo right now, and they are able to chip away at this Baldwin Wallace advantage because they're making Baldwin Wallace play their game. Mm -hmm. yeah. BW has to get back to playing Yellow Jacket basketball. Good half court defense, good smooth half court, find the open man offense. 
They're trying to push tempo, and Mount Union is better built for tempo than this Yellow Jacket team right now. Much more experienced team on the Purple Raider side of things. They know how to attack. Gleam gets the second free throw to drop, so he splits the pair. Lead back up to eight for the Yellow Jackets, 60 to 52 with 11 to go in the game. The Allen Jackson on the right wing, and he'll draw another foul against the Yellow Jackets. It's Brandy picking up the violation. That'll be his first. That's number nine on the Yellow Jackets. One more, and Mount Union will shoot two from here on out. That is a good way to get back into the ball game, shooting free throws without time coming off the clock. Jackson uh, hits the front end of the one and one, and he'll earn the second one. And he completes the pair. 60-54, Mount Union continues to draw ever closer to the Yellow Jackets with 10.50 to go in regulation. Gleam out top, he dribbles off to the right side of the floor. He'll find Peters in the right corner, now Peters dribbles out top. Over to Brandy, Brandy spins at the free throw line, throws up a left-handed runner, it's no good, rebound to Ruffin, Ruffin to Jackson, Jackson pushing tempo, gets to the free throw line. He'll headman the ball to Ruffin, Ruffin to Kakura, his triple try is up and it's true. 60-57, Purple Raiders within three of the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets with 10-22 to go here in regulation. Mount Union signals for the timeout, and I'm just gonna stop saying the game left in the game when it comes to the time. I'm just gonna say regulation, because this one has overtime written all over it the way that Mount Union is storming back right now. Well, if history repeats itself, certainly we're in for an another overtime game as they already had a double overtime game earlier this year. So uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> Baldwin Wallace has to get back to their style of play that was successful in the first half. They played under control and they did a great job rebounding on the defensive side of the floor. So far in the second half, Mount Union has done a good job to hammer the offensive glass and to push the tempo, which has resulted in the Yellow Jackets not only committing turnovers, but taking bad shots. Battle will cross the timeline. He'll swing it off to feather off to the left wing. Brandy with the ball on the left side now, out top to Battle. Battle over to Coon. Coon will put it on the deck with the left hand, drive the baseline, and the referee on the baseline is gonna say that Coon was pushed out of bounds. And they're gonna make the Yellow Jackets inbound that, fortunately for Mount Union. They did not award some free throws. Coon walked to the line, he thought he was getting two shots, and quite frankly, I agreed, I thought he was going to as well. But the referees said no, it was not a shooting foul. Featheroff takes the inbound pass. Thought about the handoff to battle. They'll put it on the deck, but it'll get stripped by Ruffin. Ruffin over to Jackson. Jackson hands it off. It's missed, but Ruffin is there to clean up the loose change, and he'll throw down another dunk. It's a one-point advantage for the Yellow Jackets. 60-59, 9.42 to go in regulation. Battle the other way. He tried to turn the corner to get the right side of the floor, and he was fouled by Taylor Moore. Moore, the one who missed the initial shot that led to the rough and throw down. And now Battle will go to the line to shoot one and one. Battle, a 61% free throw shooter on the season, has made both of his tonight. Hopefully I did not put the broadcaster curse on the young man. And at least I didn't for one of them as he hits the front end of the one and one and he'll get a second shot. So it's a two point Baldwin Wallace lead looking to make a three here with 9.39 to go in regulation. Both teams shooting the rest of the way. The pace is still gonna be frenetic but it's gonna slow down with these foul shots. Battle completes the pair, 62-59, Jackets in front, 9.38 to go. 
D. Allen Jackson on the right side. He'll dribble between the circles, get to the top of the key. He was looking for more miscommunication. Moore never uh, zigged when he was, or zagged when he was supposed to zig, and now it's another turnover for the Purple Raiders. Baldwin Wallace a chance to build on this slim three-point advantage. Jacobeck will check back into the ball game for the Purple Raiders. Jackson going to get a break here. I imagine they're going to keep him rested for that stretch run. Battle gets a screen out top from Kaminsky. Now will get another one before he pulls up for a three-pointer. It's off the front of the rim. Rebound to the Raiders. Jacobeck will send it over to Kakura. Kakura on the left side of the floor. Out to Jacobeck, right back to Kakura. The ball get reversed this time before it gets swung into the high post to Kakura, and his 14-foot fadeaway will fall 62-61. Baldwin Wallace leads Mount Union by a point, 8.48 to go in regulation. Kaminsky will fire up a triple for the Jackets right in front of the student section, and he'll knock it down. BW goes back in front by four and finally breathes a little bit of life into this Yellow Jacket team as there is a timeout on the floor. It is a full timeout. A much-needed shot if you're Baldwin Wallace. I mean, you've struggled from the three-point line so far after having so much success in the first half, uh, but definitely a much-needed basket. Um, and Coach uh, Heil calls a quick timeout to maybe discuss things on the on the defensive end to kind of uh, limit limit Mount Union. You got to think that they're gonna throw something at Ruffin. I mean, he's got 20 points and 13 rebounds on the day, so certainly him and Kakura uh, have 36 of the 61. So they've got to do something to stop one, if not both. Oh, without question, they have to almost pick their poison. Who are they gonna uh, let? take over the game offensively or not take over but who are they going to live with making plays and who are they going to force to make plays personally I'm forcing Kakura to shoot the three ball I know he's very capable of shooting the ball as he's knocked down three of his five attempts tonight but I like those odds from 23 feet rather than Ruffin throwing down two-handed dunks possession after possession as he has done here in the second half He's got two throwdowns, three for the game. This young man is playing above the rim. He's playing above his head, well above his averages for the season. 13.8 points and 7.8 rebounds. And like you said, already with one heck of a performance, 20 points, 13 boards, 8 of 10 shooting. Now, granted, some of those shots have been from two feet with two hands on the rim at the time, but still, that's pretty impressive. Kakura will shoot a 13-footer, and he'll knock it down. It's back to a one-possession game, 65-63. When I said let Kakura beat you with the jumper, I meant outside of the three-point arc, not that 13 feet and in. That was like deja vu. It's the same play they ran before. Yep, exactly the same play they hit on their last possession. Brandy with the ball, and Kuhn will draw a foul while trying to set a screen, picking up the foul. Franciconi, that's his third foul. And he always seems like he's in on the action, whether it's on the glass or whether it's a foul. It's a scrappy, scrappy six foot five freshman from Talmadge that's seeing some quality minutes for this Purple Raider team. The front end of the one and one is up and it's good. Coon will get a second shot, chance to make it a two possession ball game here. Put it on the deck twice. Eye up the rim, aim, fire, and knock it down for the Jackets. 67-63. BW in front, 8-12 to go in regulation. Jacobeck off on the right side. Out top to Franciconi. Now inside to the mid post, it goes to Ruff, and he'll back down the defender, go up for the hook shot, and get it to drop. Back to two points. 67-65, Mount Union cuts the deficit to a basket. Well, so far they haven't done anything differently on Ruffin or, or Kakura. Or yeah. Kakura. <laughs> Battle with the ball on the left side of the floor. He'll drive to the lane. Out to Kuhn. Kuhn will drive into the lane now. Go up with the left hand, left it short. Gets his own rebound. Goes up off glass. No good, but he's going to get two coming from the charity stripe as he was hacked in the act of shooting. Coon with 
15 points on the night. One of the best performances for the Jackets. Make it 16 as he hits the front end of the two-shot foul. Now four Jackets in double figures as Battle and uh, Featherolf each have 12 and Gleam has 10. Kuhn's second attempt is on the way. It's on the mark as well. 69-65. Jackets go back in front by four with seven and a half to go in regulation. Jacobek gets a screen from Moore, helps him get to the right wing. Now over to the left wing, it goes to Kakura. He'll drive baseline, go too strong, but Ruffin is there again for the two-handed throwdown. That is dunk number three here in the second half, two of which have come on putbacks. Kuhn on the right wing, he'll get a screen. Now he'll pull up for a three, and he'll bottom it out for the Jackets. 72-67. Jackets in front by five, seven to go in the regulation. Jacobek on the right side of the floor, looking for the mid post entry to Kakura. The Jackets shut it off. Kakura now will get the pass out top between the circles. He'll try to drive against Battle and hit off his shoe. Brandy running the break. He's going to go up in the lane with the left hand, too strong. Rebound tip to Battle. Battle's shot is swatted out of bounds by Moore, but the referee on the near sideline says that Moore got a piece of Battle's hand, and that'll give the Jackets two shots, and more importantly, that'll give Mount Union ten fouls. So every foul from here on out, two shots for the Jackets. Yeah, we kind of thought BW would be the first one to ten fouls, but uh, they've done a better job of containing them uh, on, on the defensive end, and BW is the one with the ten fouls first. Yeah, absolutely. Battle uh, misses the first of the two shots. Still a chance to extend it to a, a six-point advantage. If I'm Mount Union, though, I'm okay with him splitting the pair because that means that uh, well, actually he doesn't split the pair. Is I really put the jinx on the poor kid as he misses both. But that is a possession where Mount Union doesn't give up any points. So it's a positive possession for their defense and a chance for them to cut further into the Yellow Jacket lead. Kakura between the circles. He'll swing it left. Now it'll go back to Kakura. He'll pull the trigger on the triple. Too strong off back iron. Rebound is batted into the hands of Jarrett Ruffin, and he makes another shot inside the restricted area. 26 points for the senior forward. And it is a three-point lead now for the Jackets. 72-69, six minutes to go in regulation. Brandy thought about the triple. He'll put it on the deck. Now trying to cross up a defender, he'll back out. Try again to charge, but he'll swing it out to Kuhn. Kuhn will walk it between the circles. Five on the shot clock. Kuhn will drive to the free throw line, get into the lane, go up in traffic. He lost it, and that's another shot clock violation for the Yellow Jackets. That's number two in the game. Yeah, you know, you hate to see that because they've had a couple really good offensive possessions before that. They. Uh, had a five-point lead, and um, they weren't really, they weren't able to capitalize on uh, the Mount Union uh, possession uh, beforehand. Jackson dribbles into the lane, out to Franciconi, now to Kakura on the right side. Kakura drives into the lane, throws up a runner, and it's a one-point ball game as he finds that one. 72-71, BW in front by a point. 5.18 to go in regulation. Kuhn on the left side. Gets a screen from Featheroff, but Ruffin is right there to switch it. Featheroff out to Kaminsky, just inside the three-point line. It's no good. Battle thought he had Gleam in the right corner, so he tipped away the offensive rebound, and he tipped it right in the student section as Gleam. A little bit of miscommunication. He ran left. Battle swatted it right. Unfortunately, that happens, and now Mount Union with a chance to take the advantage. 2-3 zone defense for the Jackets. Jakovec works the ball to the left side. Out top it goes to Jackson over to the right wing to Kakura. Kakura looking to enter it inside to Ruffin. Either way, that's a good thing for Mount Union, whether Kakura shoots or Ruffin gets it in the post. Kakura will get it on the right wing, try to stutter step, and he is whistled for the travel violation. That's a key turnover right there for Mount Union. We'll see if BW can take advantage. And when that, neither team is really kind of put their foot on the gas uh, here in the second half. It's been back and forth, back and forth. I mean, granted, Mount Union did uh, decrease the lead by 10, but um, certainly they, they haven't done uh, 
a, jo a very good job here down the stretch. Featheroff with the ball in the post, working against Ruffin. He almost lost it, but he'll swing it out to Gleam. Gleam on the right side of the floor. He'll get a screen from Warner. Now he'll swing it to Warner. Warner will fire up a three ball. It left it short. Rebound to Kakura. He'll outlet the ball to Jackson. Jackson walking across the timeline. Not something that Mountain Union does very often. But now they're getting set in the half court. Ball gets entered to Ruffin. 15-foot jumper along the baseline. Rattles out. Rebound to Felter off of the Jackets. He'll outlet it to Gleam. Gleam slows down the tempo trying to let the Jackets catch up. He'll get a screen, get to the line, get to the lane, and he'll get tied up. But the official on the far sideline is gonna call a foul. And I tell you what, if I'm Mike Fuline, I, I have a few words for that call. And they aren't very pleasant as that looked like a pretty good tie up right there. It was an out of control player for BW who happened to just absorb a little bit of contact, but the defender had a lot of the ball too. Yeah, if you're the Mount Union coaching staff, you certainly have had quite a few words for uh, the refs tonight. Gleam makes the front end of the two-shot foul. Chance to make it a three-point game for the Jackets with 3.46 to go in regulation, and he'll do just that. 74-71, BW in front. Jack back across the timeline. And Mike Fuline will waste no time as he signals for a timeout. It's going to be a full. So while we have this time, we want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket basketball game is being brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Olympic Forest is committed to sustainability. Domino's Pizza, call us in Berea at 440-891-0030 or go online at www.dominoes.com. The Oriole Cafe, a great place for sports, located at 294 North Rocky River Drive in less than two minutes from the BW campus. The Hoffman Group for all of your insurance and risk management needs. The Ohio Education Credit Union gain the advantage. The Ohio Education Credit Union offers convenience, trust, and value. Build your future today. Medical Mutual of Ohio. Medical Mutual is a healthcare provider of Baldwin Wallace University. The Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division, the healthcare provider for BW Athletics. Parkway Auto Care in Berea, Strongsville Express Tire and Auto Service, and in Montville. We serve the southwestern suburbs of Greater Cleveland. American International, when you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. The Comfort Inn in Middleburg Heights, where your comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests. And the Courtyard by Marriott and Town Place Suites in Middleburg Heights. Have you stayed at a Marriott today? 3.42 to go here at the Ersprung Gymnasium, 74-71. Baldwin Wallace in front, Mount Union with possession of the basketball. Ruffin on the left wing. He'll swing it over to Kakura on the right wing now. Kakura out front to Jakobek, back to Kakura. Kakura tries to dribble drive. Now out to D. Allen Jackson. He'll drive along the baseline, left it short, hit off the front of the rim. But Ruffin is there for the rebound. He'll outlet to Jakobek, and he'll get a floater in the lane to go. 74-73, Purple Raiders trail by one with 3.15 to go in regulation. Kuhn on the right side of the floor. He'll find Featheroff on the low block. Back to Battle on the left wing. Battle will drive inside, kick it to the corner. It goes to Warner. His triple try is up, and it's good. 77-73, Baldwin Wallace in front. Under three to go in regulation. Sweaty Palms time. Jackson with the ball. He'll swing it over to Kakura. Kakura triple try is up and he'll answer with one of his own. 77-76, just like you said, this one's coming down to the wire. Battle across the timeline. He'll dribble off left side, now pass to Kuhn. Kuhn gets a screen. He'll get to the middle of the floor, get to the line, get to the lane, get to the low block, and he'll swing it out to Featheroff. Featheroff thought about the triple, now he'll hand off to Kuhn. Kuhn's gonna try to dribble drive. He'll pull up with a step back floater, left it a little bit too short. The Allen Jackson will push for the Raiders. Out to Jakobek, Jakobek in the lane. He throws up a floater, left it short, cleaned up his own miss. Fires out to Kakura, his triple try is no good. Rebound to Ruffin, his putback is good, and he'll get one more coming from the line as he was fouled in the act of shooting. 78-77, Mountain Union in front. 
Two minutes to play in regulation and Ruffin at the line with a chance to make it a two point Purple Raider lead. Yeah, the last five, six minutes or so we've really seen Mount Union hitting that offensive glass hard. Um, and the last last couple possessions, um, they've gotten second chance opportunities and you see a big play by Ruffin to uh, get the and one. Ruffin has played unbelievably well tonight for the Purple Raiders. 12 of 15 from the field, 28 points. He has more than doubled his regular season average of 13.8. This is a young man who is playing at an unbelievable pace. And when you look at his activity on the glass, 18 rebounds, absolutely outstanding. And it's a pretty good balance too. Heading into that last possession, he was nine to seven in favor of defense to offensive rebounds. He almost has, when you count offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds as their own statistic, he could have a triple double by the end of this game. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's playing really the best he's played all year. Ruffin will complete another three point play and it's 79-77, Mount Union in front. Under two minutes to play. Battle with the ball, Kuhn on the left wing. Kuhn looked for the entry pass, now he'll try to dribble drive. Now he'll swing it over to Featheroff. He'll fire up a three, left it too strong. Rebound to Jakobek of the Purple Raiders. Good weak side block out, prevented Warner from getting the basketball. Jakobek will extend the play a little bit, go with a little bit slower tempo, trying to take some more time off this clock. And now with 13 left to go, he'll get the offense set as Kakura will fire up a 14 foot shot that is off the mark and is rebounded by the Yellow Jackets. Warner pulls it down and Warner is very fortunate that the referee saw the, or felt the contact rather was on Ruffin because Warner kind of gave him a nice little shoulder shrug and sent Ruffin to the deck. Warner only, this is his second and third free throw in the year. He hasn't, he missed his only uh, attempt. So good shooter. So we think he'd be a pretty good foul shooter. Just hasn't had the opportunities. The first one is up and it's good. He has a chance to knock the score at 79 if he completes the pair. Skelza now back on the floor for Mount Union. That was a long break for him. Warner's off to Mark with the second one. It's a one point lead for Mount Union, 79-78, 118 to go. Jackets will get it back with under 50 seconds to go. Jacobek will dribble off to the left side. He'll swing it out top between the circles to Jackson. Jackson over to Skelson, now into Ruffin it goes. Eight on the shot clock, Ruffin attacks the rim. Left it too strong as it sailed over the rim and BW gets the basketball back. Battle going the other way. He gets into the lane. He'll swing it out to Warner. Warner will fire up a three, it's off the mark. Rebound Ruffin. 12 second differential on the game and shot clocks. 40 on the game, 28 on the shot. Mountain Union has possession of the ball. Jakovec across the timeline. Just outside of the center circle and now Skelza will signal for a timeout. And it's gonna be a full timeout with 27 seconds to go in regulation and 15 seconds to go on the shot clock. This one definitely coming down to the wire. What at one point, a 13 point BW lead has dwindled all the way down throughout the second half. Mount Union just kept chipping away, and now they find themselves with a chance to go up by as many as four points if they hit a three-pointer on this possession. Yeah, I, I think uh, if you're balling well, so you, you know, Warner took a quick shot, maybe not the best shot you could have gotten, but it, it does allow you uh, to potentially get a stop and uh, have the ball for uh, the last shot and try to win it. That's really more, uh, in my opinion, what that was about. It was a two for one deal. The Jackets wanted to play for that last shot and by doing so, maybe not having to rush so much is just the first good open look rather than passing it up for a great look. They elected to take the, be the first best shot they could and that'll get them an extra possession if they hit the boards. Yep, they gotta get a stop first. 
Skelza, Jackson, Kakura, Jakobek, and Ruffin on the floor for the Raiders. Felteroff, Kuhn, Battle, Randy and Peters on the floor, or excuse, excuse me, Gleam and Peters on the floor for the Jackets. Jackson, five seconds on the shot clock. He's gonna attack the hoop. He'll throw up a right-handed floater. It's no good. Rebound batted around underneath the hoop. And there's gonna be a foul called with 12 seconds left on the clock. And it's gonna go against the Purple Raiders. A loose ball foul in the lane as the ball was batted out of bounds along the sideline. Fuel line wants another explanation from the official and regardless of what that official says it's not going to be well received no i you know it, at that point in the ball game you know you, guys going for the ball it, it's really hard to call a, a foul in that situation i mean guys not really going after bodies but they're going for the ball peters on the way with his first attempt it's off the mark this is a man who made 17 of 23 coming into the game 73.9 percent not a good time to miss one. He has to make this one to save a tie. It's on the way, it's good, 79-79. We are all knotted up with 12 seconds left, 12.1 seconds left, excuse me, and Mount Union has the last shot. You gotta think they're either going to Ruffin or Kakura. Uh, you would think, conventional wisdom would say you would go to one of those two guys. Uh, Ruffin with an unbelievable performance of 29 points and 19 boards, and Kakura with 25 points. The thing of it is, if you go with a floater from Kakura, you have Ruffin to offensive rebound the basketball, and that's been a pretty darn good combination so far as Ruffin has, I believe by my count, eight offensive rebounds in the game. So uh, there are options for Mount Union. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. I think, you know, D. Allen Jackson is certainly probably going to be in there. He's going to be handling the ball, creating something, whether it's for himself or for uh, Kakura or even maybe a floater from uh, Jackson and let Ruffin clean it up. Um, you know, Mount Union's got a wide, uh, a wide array of options on this last possession. They definitely do. Now, here's an interesting thought. If you're BW, do you try to foul? and send Mount Union to the line, and then you get last possession. You give up a lead, but you get the ball back. It's a risky proposition. It's 50-50 at yeah. best. I, I think if you're if you're BW, uh, the, the worst thing is, is overtime. You know, I think you, you gotta try to uh, hold that lead. You know, you clawed back into it, you made a free throw. I think if you're given Mount Union uh, free points, I, I don't think that's, that's the right way to to look, I think you gotta play straight up. You gotta play straight up. And if they make a shot, they make a shot. Kakura to trigger the inbound pass. He gets it to Jackson. Jackson will jog it across the timeline. Eight seconds to go here in regulation. He's on the right side of the floor. Jackson's gonna keep it. He's got the ball out top. He fires up a three. It's off the mark. Tip up is no good. And there, however, there is a foul called on one of the Jackets. And Mount Union's gonna have a chance to win this ball game at the free throw line. Wow. It's gonna be Skelza shooting the ball. There's no time on the clock. If that's the case, then everybody has to clear the lane and Skelza shoots by himself. The officials talk it over. We'll see if they're gonna add some time on the clock. They're gonna tell everybody to fill in, so time will be added. Four seconds seems like a lot. I think we're gonna try to have to tick down some time. Point four is what's showing on the clock. So really this is the ball game right here for the Yellow Jackets. And Tom Hiles gonna get a timeout. What an inopportune time to commit a foul on the defensive side of the basketball. Skelza off balance had a one-handed attempt at the basket and it was no good, but he drew enough contact to draw the foul. 
And that was is going to give Mountain Union a chance to get out of here with a victory if Skelza at least splits the pair. If he splits the pair, if he hits the first one, more than likely he's going to miss the second one, and that'll take whatever time is left off the clock. Just uh, on the season, in just eight games, Skelza is three for three at the charity stripe. This is a man who is returning to action along with the Allen Jackson after a long stint on the sideline because of injury and he has a chance to write himself one heck of a return story if he can finish this off. Yeah, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that last play. I'm not really sure what happened or uh, who, who fouled him, but that's heartbreaking if he ends up making them. None of the Purple Raiders are gonna join their teammate in the free throw area. They're all standing at half court. There's only three Yellow Jackets in the lane. Skelza puts it on the deck twice, raises up, and he's off the mark, off the back of the rim. Jacobet goes up and pats him on the backside, trying to give him some encouragement, so does Kakura. Skelza shakes him off, says, I'm all right. He'll put it on the deck three times, eye up the rim, raise, fire, and knock it down. 80-79. Mountain Union in front with .4 seconds on the clock. BW uses that last time out. And now, now you're hoping for a clear lane and you're hoping for one heck of a look for a guard to raise up from about three quarter court. Yeah, or maybe even something uh, towards the basket, almost like a, an alley-oop, uh, maybe to feather off, maybe Ryan Walsh might be in there. Uh, but certainly .4, you don't, I mean, you have enough time to catch and shoot, yep. and that's it. You can't pump fake, you yep. can't do anything. It's gotta be catch and go toward the hoop. There is no hesitation uh, for the Yellow Jackets. They have to go at the rim. One point game, .4 seconds left on the clock. We said we were anticipating a classic after the double overtime thriller in Alliance earlier this year. Um, likelihood of overtime, not very good tonight, unless the officials call another foul in the last Point four seconds. We shall see what the Yellow Jackets try to do. Ruffin, Franciconi, Jacobek, Jackson, and Kakura are on the floor, and now Jackson's going to head to the bench. And coming on for him is Rory June, a six seven senior center out of Fairview Park just up the road from here and I imagine he's going to be standing over the inbounder call it a hunch but six foot seven he's going to be standing over the inbounder Warner to trigger the pass Warner runs the length of the baseline he's it's batted into the air and that's going to end the ball game as Mount Union earns an 80 to 79 victory over the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. A hard fought game that literally came down to the last second with the victory. Mount Union improves to 13 and 5 on the campaign and 9 and 2 in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Baldwin Wallace drops to 10 and 8 overall and 5 and 6 in OAC play. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's game. For my partner, Cooper Moretz, I'm Matt Florjancic saying make today better than yesterday and make tomorrow better than today. Have a great night, everybody.